Hello everyone, I'm Rodney from FreeGameMan.com and today I'm looking at this power supply from Silverstone. Now, maybe you're looking at replacing your current power supply or building a brand new medium to high-end gaming rig if you are awesome. This is perfect. 750 watts, it peaks out at 800 watts. This, by the way, is the Silverstone ST75F GS power supply and it is in fact the world's smallest fully modular power supply. So let's get to it. First of all, the box. Beautiful box. Tiny for a power supply and all the leads being in it and whatnot. Lots of pictures and features and specifications about it. Let's look inside. Hopefully there's a power supply in here. Now, for those of you who are paying attention and following my video reviews throughout the years, you're probably thinking, why is Rodney reviewing the same model again? He did this a couple of years ago. You'll be right, in fact, and I'm very impressed that you know that. I did indeed do a video review on the ST75FGS. However, that was on version 1. And this, well, is version 2. So what's different between version 1 and version 2? I will get to that in just a minute. Have patience. This is the spec manual. This is the user's manual. And this here, well, it's the super tiny 750 watt completely modular power supply. Mm -hmm. And here we have all of the glorious flat flexible modular leads I love these things, a power cord, velcro ties, and screws. And you have here four regular screws and four thumb screws, and they are all black. Their main focus for these products, well, is on downsizing. That's right, making them as compact as possible, being completely modular, but still offering clean quality power. How compact is this? Well, version 1 was super impressive at 150 millimeters in length. This one though is 10 millimeters shorter at 140 millimeters in length. And it doesn't stop there because version 2 is actually lighter than version 1. Version 2 is 2.1 kilograms and version 1 is 2.4 kilograms. So now that I have you super excited envisioning what kind of kick-ass small form factor gaming rig you could build with this, let's try and continue and talk about wattage. And of course, to understand that, you need to know what rails are. Rails, well, pretty simple really. They're basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use and there are essentially two different rails. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. Now in this particular case the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 120 watts and the 12 volt is 750 watts which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. And I'll impress you even more because you know what? While this is a 750 watt power supply, it peaks out at 800 watts. Moving right along, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards, and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. Now it's also crazy important to know the peak amps on each rail. Both the 3.3 as well as the 5 volt rails are 22 amps each, and this power supply has a single plus 12 volt rail, and it is 62.5 amps. Being super smart like you are, you're probably wondering, are there any differences when it comes to amps and wattage from version 1 to version 2? Well, yes, there are indeed differences, and I'll go through those now. For example, the plus 5 volt rail is a little stronger on version 1 at 25 amps. Remember, on version 2, it's 22 amps. As well, the plus 12 volt rail is different, but this one is a little weaker on version 1 at 62 amps as opposed to 62.5 on version 
2. And of course that means there's going to be a difference in wattage on the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail going from version 1 to version 2. Keep in mind that version 1 has a stronger plus 5 volt rail and that means the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is going to have more watts at 150 watts for version 1 as opposed to 120 watts for version 2. But this one, version 2, has a stronger plus 12 volt rail and that equates into 750 watts. Version 1 though, a little weaker on the plus 12 volt rail and it is still very impressive at 744 watts. Now there are a number of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is definitely wattage. You need to determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware that you will be installing. Now generally speaking a medium to high end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply for a hardcore system. Select a power supply that is 800 watts. If however you are building a really crazy system, you know, top the line with a multiple card video setup and all that kind of jazz, then get a power supply that's over 1000 watts. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficiency and this power supply's efficiency is 87 to 90% at 20 to 100% loading. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has a PFC, APFC or active power factor correction assist the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, 80 plus, NVIDIA SLI, and AMD Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications, and this power supply meets the 80 plus gold certification. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors because it really ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low grade capacitors and thankfully this power supply has them. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup and consider one, well, like this one, that has a modular design because it really cleans up all that clutter inside of the case. Also, consider a power supply that has a great warranty and this one does at three years. Okay, so let's have a closer look. They have this kind of rough black paint finish. The housing is steel and they include this super quiet 120 millimeter fan and there's lots of ventilation so it should remain cool in just about any environment and thankfully this power supply comes with a power switch and here is where the power cord gets connected. Oh and I forgot to mention this but I guess the video review probably wouldn't be complete if I didn't although you can see it. It's a label. Oh, it shows the model, amps, watts and whatnot. Top of the power supply have their Silverstone logo just stamped right in here. A label on the back here as well showing you where you connect these super sexy flat flexible leads. Finally have a listen to the 120 millimeter fan. Like version 1, version 2 is simply outstanding and more impressive when you consider the fact that it is 10 millimeters shorter than version 1. I mean version 1 was impressive at 150 millimeters in length. This thing is 140 millimeters in length. The possibilities for this power supply, well, they are endless. Plus, it's 100% modular and comes with a super quiet 120 millimeter fan. There really isn't anything not to like about this power supply. Without a doubt, it is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.